This video has 13 million views at the time of this recording. It's a one hour long video by Marty Lobdell. And my goal in this video is to summarize it in five minutes so you can come back at any time if you want to improve your study efficiency, take down these points and to apply it to your own studies. I'll also add a little bit of my own experience studying five years undergraduate as a pharmacist and also a further five years postgraduate as a doctor as well. We've lots to cover, so let's dive right into this. The number one thing he talks about is a strategic recharge to maintain maximum study study efficiency. The whole concept of having a sustained study period doesn't necessarily help. So just like something I derived like a study efficiency curve as I covered in this particular video itself, basically you start off with this high study efficiency and then you tail down, usually within about 25 to 30 minutes, you tail down to absolutely nothing. So if you sit down for a four hour, six hour study period, force yourself to study, you're absolutely tailing off your study efficiency and you're basically barely staring at the paper itself and your brain is not absorbed any information. And this is why some people find the Pomodoro technique useful. They study for 25 minutes, take a five minute break, and then they repeat the cycle again. Because once they're able to take a break, their mind refreshes and they're able to go back up to the maximum study efficiency. He also talks about having a celebratory goal in mind, having something that you can look forward to at the end of the session to reward yourself. Like I'm probably going to watch a movie after this video. Then you're able to associate something fun with your study and this loop goes on. Then number two is talking about creating a specific study area. For example, your bedroom's primary function is for sleep and rest. Then your living room primary function is for recreation and socialization. So you should really be creating a study desk, study area, or if you don't have a room, make sure you have a study lamp. Make sure you only turn that lamp on when you're studying. So it conditions your brain that you're in study mode and it gets you into the zone much quicker. But it may or may not work for some people. For me, I love changing my study environment around. I go to the cafe, go to a different cafe, come back to my home, I'll study on my bed, study on my sofa. That boosts my own study productivity. So you need to trial what works for you. Then number three, the more active you are, the better you're learning. So rote learning we know is inefficient. Repeating the same thing over and over again, chanting it, rewriting it and highlighting it, it doesn't work. The next really important thing is that you differentiate between concepts and facts as well. Facts meaning names of bones, the molecule names, all of these things are dry facts. You can't rationalize it. This you need to use separate methods that we talk about in the end. Then it's concepts. Most of the lecturers and school, they want you to grasp the concepts because once the concept is with you, it's for life. Then you can later on look up the facts or use various memorization techniques to tag on these facts onto the concepts. For example, I'm going to read out 13 words and I want you to recall them right back at me without writing them. So Y, P, P, Y, A, D, S, R, U, H, T, A, T. It doesn't make much sense in your mind, but if I spell it out as H-A-P-P-Y-T-H-U-R-S-D-A-Y, you can probably recall it tomorrow or the day after because now it makes sense. If you memorize concepts like facts and just rote learning, it's more like these mumble jumbled pieces of letters that doesn't make sense. So make sure with concepts, you're able to explain it in your own words, in simple words, explain it to a friend, explain it to yourself, then you have formed deep understanding. Next, he talks about the usefulness of study groups. Make sure that you have a group that can keep you accountable you can be teaching each other. These are really good methods to keep you going as well. In number five, he talks about avoiding superficial studying. He talks about the concept of recognition versus recollection. You able to pull out your note from one day ago, or you go, oh, actually, I remember some of these, but that's probably an illusion of recognition. Once you close it up, get a blank piece of paper out, get a blank Word document out, type out how much you know. Probably you don't know much because your illusion of recognition has gotten in the way and it's given you the false sense that you know the information but you aren't able to recall the information. So make sure you differentiate the two and make sure you're able to recall the information. Otherwise, test yourself enough so you can actually write it from scratch. So now it's from your brain to that piece of paper rather than this false sense of recognition that doesn't help you in the exams. Number six, he talks about sleep consolidating your learning as well. When you sleep, you go through deeper and deeper sleeping stages. When you come up to this final REM stage where you consolidate memory, consolidate all the learnings for the day and it's essential for your learning, proven by many studies. So make sure you have enough sleep. That is really important. Marty also talks about no one ever makes money talking about telling you to go to sleep. That's why no one talks about it. And make sure to check this video in the link where I talk more about finding your own sleep cycle and optimizing that as well. Then number seven, he talks about effective note taking. So not just the note taking itself, but after the lecture, spend about five minutes just fleshing out everything and elaborate on the learnings that you've done. So this acts as a chance for you to have a bit of active recall and test your deep understanding and forms understanding 
understanding and connections with analogies and concepts you know already. This greatly helps your learning. Then number eight, he talks about the best way of learning is teaching. Because by teaching, it's stress test your understanding. Being able to explain it in different words to different people, and then they will question you at different angles to make sure you don't have knowledge gaps. You can even teach an empty chair, try to teach yourself, try to teach a five-year-old kid, make sure that you're able to teach this. And Marty also says, spend 80% of your time recalling and only 20% of the time only reading. This, I agree very much. And so number nine, he talks about the SQ3R methods for textbooks and how to absorb textbooks the best way. So let's take a textbook, for example, a reference book here. So first is S, survey. Make sure you are going through the contents, table of contents, and just going through what sections are there. So as you look through the pictures and tables, you start to form the Q, which is the questions. Because as you ask the questions, the information will pop up at you as you move on to the next phase, which is the first of the three R's, which is reading. So as you look through the pages, you just start to answer your questions. Oh, why are lymphocytes structured this way? What is their function? So you actually look out for them. Then after that, make sure you recite it, close the book out, and make sure you're able to write it in your own words in a blank piece of paper. Because if you aren't able to do that, you're only recognizing the information, and that's no good for you in the exam. Then as the exam time comes, make sure you are reviewing the information. So basically, space repetition, repeating the information in your brain. Then number 10, he talks about using mnemonics to help you memorize facts, which we talked about earlier. So a mnemonic, he says, it's basically any system that facilitates recall. He talks about three main things. First is the acronyms, like Roy G. Biv for the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, and so on. Or you get mixed up with the heart and the oxygenated versus deoxygenated blood pumping around. Is it the right side or the left side? If you remember, radio, R-A-D-E-O, right side of the atrium is deoxygenated. So that's how you can remember it. Then he talked about coined sayings. So for example, with the screws, it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. All of these can help. Or my very good mother just served us nine pizzas, which is the name of the planets. Or you can be using interacting images for example, you're trying to remember how much energy is in carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Carbohydrates with a car in it, car has four wheels, so it has four calories per gram. And then you can do the same with protein. Protein, apparently pro-car is some sort of race. So pro-car, again, the car has four wheels, so you remember four calories per Program. Then the fat, how do you remember that? He was saying fat cats. So basically cats have nine lives. So you remember fat cats definitely have nine lives and therefore it's nine calories per gram. So I hope the summary of Marty's video has been helpful for you and I hope you can just use one or two of these each time so you don't overwhelm yourself and change your study habits drastically. Work on one or two of these and then come back and work on the second and third and the fourth and fifth and eventually you'll be studying really efficiently. You can also check out our website for more study efficiency tips and join our mailing list. Otherwise, like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.